All right, so in this video, we'll cover six different variants of the best time to buy and sell stock problem. It will range from easy to medium to hard. So let's get started. This is the first one. In this question, okay, we are you're given an array prices where prices of I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. Return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you cannot achieve any profit, return zero. So basically, we can do a single transaction, right? So I buy a stock on one day and I sell on another day. Like in this example, uh, I would never want to buy on seven because I will never gain a profit. On if I buy at one, I will sell at six, something like that, right? So so how do we solve for this? A single transaction we have to do. So for every day, if I find the maximum value that I can get on the right, right? Uh, so so either I either I fix my buy price and sell price. So basically, like if I buy here, then what is the max where I can sell? And if I buy here, what is the max that I can sell for? Right. So so either for so, so if I'm moving from left to right, then at five. What is the information that I have? So what I want to do is if I sell it on this day, on which price should I have bought? Okay, so let's let's let me repeat. So I'm moving the array from left to right, and if I choose a particular day and I find if I want to find the profit on this day, then I would have to sell on this day. Then I would have to find the minimum value uh, that I have encountered in the array so far, right? Uh, so the minimum. So for every array, if I have the left min. Then I know the profit that I get by selling on that day, All right? So, so based on that, let's track the minimum value and and find the uh, profit that I can get by selling on each day and capture the maximum of that profit. So, so what I mean by that is, one thing is profit, right? So, our profit is zero, and other thing is minimum. So, minimum, and. Uh, uh, we'll define it as let's say the first guy, right? And then what we'll do is is for int i equals to one, I less than prices uh, and plus plus. Uh, let's look at the profit, right? So profit equals to uh, so we we'll, we'll just give it out the maximum profit because we're going to do a single transaction. So on this day the profit would be uh, prices of I minus whatever the min that I have seen so far. And now let's also update the min. Dot min prices, sorry, uh, min comma, this is what I have. Right, so for every day, I know the profit that I can get would be this. And I can, and I keep track of the maximum of that. So I just return profit. And let's see if this works. And it works. So it doesn't uh, time and space complexity, a single loop, so O of n, and space complexity is O of 1. All right, let's move on to the next problem. This is uh, again the same thing, but some to buy and sell stock 2 here. You're again given the same price as array. On each day, you may decide to buy or sell the stock can only hold at most one share of the stock at any time. However, you can buy it, then sell it immediately on the same day. Return the maximum profit. So here, the difference between this problem and the previous problem is, uh, there we could do only a single transaction. Here, you could do as many transactions as you like, but you can only hold one stock at a time. So you can't buy and then buy again. You have after, once you are bought, you have to sell, and then only you can buy. So, so let's look at this. So let's 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 consider the case where the array is uh, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Decreasing array, you'll never have any profit. So you'll never buy, never sell. Right? If there is something like one, two, three, four, five, and then it drops back to let's say one, and this. One, two, three, four, five. Then I would do, I would buy at this, sell at this, and then buy at this, sell at this, right? Now, the question is, and the point is, so what's the graphing looking like? So basically, it's an increasing graph, and then it drops, and then again, an increasing graph. So, 
So now one thing you notice uh, buy at one and sell at five is equivalent to buy at one sell at two and then buy at two sell at three right and then buy at three sell at four and buy at four sell at five if you think about this case right ultimately one to five you're getting the difference as uh, five minus one four it's same as one to two differences one two to three differences one three to four differences one four to five differences one so so basically what you have to see is every time in the, our price graph is increasing that is a profit that we will achieve right so yes it was from one to five but one to five can be divided into two minus one plus three minus two plus four minus three plus five minus four you don't have to really find that five and then where it is decreasing like you could do that but simple ways every time you see an increase in the graph just add that is add that profit right so so what i mean by that is define profit as zero and for i equals to let's say one i less than land plus plus if your Price of i is greater than price of i minus one, then this profit you will get, right? Because the number there is no limit on the number of transactions, so you will get this uh, difference on the increase. You will get that profit. So is equals to prices of i minus prices of i minus one, and that is it. So and you return this profit. Let's sum it and see if this works. Uh, okay, there is a violation error. Okay, it's a problem. Spelling mistake. And it works. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Now, this one is best time to buy and sell stock with the transaction fee. So it's the same as the previous problem. You can do as many transactions as you want, but for every transaction, uh, there is a fee. Okay. So let's look at the example, one, three, two, four, two, something, something, fee equals to it. The maximum profit can be achieved by this, this, this. Buying at, so the total profit. So basically it does two transactions. One is buy, sell, other is this buy, sell. When you do this buy, sell, eight minus one is seven, that's a profit, but it subtracts two as a transaction fee. Okay, so that means the transaction fee is only applied to the overall transaction, that means to the, the, to the payer of buy and sell, not for individual buy and individual sell. So total buy and sell, so maybe you apply the transaction fee when you're selling, right? Uh, maybe, yeah. Okay. And uh, similarly, five, uh, minus four, five, and then minus two again. So the transaction fee is also the case. All right. And so how do we account for this? Now this transition fee can be sometimes, you know, like this transition fee can be costly because uh, it, it could be that like one to two, right? So there is no point of buying at one and selling at two if a transition fee is five. So transition fee also makes a, plays a role in uh, whether or not you actually buy and sell on a specific day, specific day. So now, but in general, okay? Uh, like some of the previous problem, let's look at this problem in a different light. Okay, so on any day, you have two options either you buy or you sell, right? Uh, and then let's call the balance that we have left. Initially, let's say our balance is zero, right? And then after you buy, how much is our balance? After we sell, how much is our balance? Let, let's keep track of that, right? And, and let's go back to the previous problem here, right? So we did this now, look at it in a slightly different way. So Let's call uh, buy. So initially, uh, you let's say you buy and 
your cell you can do these two things both are zero and now for each price in prices array you have two options either you buy or you sell so if you buy what will happen what will be your balance after you buy something your balance will be minus of price uh, and you'll want to because it's negative you'll want to maximize it so so uh, so it will be something like max or buy and then whatever was if you if you think about it this is so what this this is means is balance after buy right and this is the balance after sell so i use sell minus prices because okay if you have sold last time you may have already accumulated some profit right so and from that balance now you whatever this price is you're paying that extra price so now uh, for the first time obviously uh, whatever is the first day the cost is minus so that because this will be zero. you don't want this to be remain zero this should become some negative value so this buy maybe we give uh, some very large negative value so now when you do the max of this this minus of whatever the price on that day is that will be taken right so this is my buy and my sell would be again there are two options so when i sell uh, maximizing this balance obviously always maximize the balance and when you sell what whenever the last time you bought that after that you had the balance and then you add the price on that day right and eventually uh, what you would return is a final balance after you sell right so you can argue that you did not do any transaction but this takes into account buying and selling on the same day so the sell in that case would remain zero right uh, so this should be fine now let's quickly see if this works and that works as well now let's take in this code from here and apply it here now the only difference here is that when you're selling uh, instead of this you're also paying a fee right uh, we saw uh, this when you're selling this extra fee has been deducted and so that's it right your balance after buy your balance after sell on each day you either buy or you sell and if you buy you always want to keep maximizing your uh, uh, this uh, balance so when you buy your balance on if you buy if you're buying explicitly on that day then whatever the last sell was right uh, after that you from that you remove your that would have, that would be your balance and then you you subtract this price if you're selling on that day then what, whenever you last bought and after that whatever your balance was plus you add the day so we are selling you get this extra price and you pay that fee and on finally on the last day whatever you sell uh, or sorry whatever the balance of the sell is what it is and it works as well all right let's move on to the next problem best time to buy and sell stock with cool down all right so again here sort of similar problems like you can do as many transactions as you like but there is one condition and that condition is that after you sell your stock you cannot buy a stock on the next day so after you sell you cannot buy okay so what are the three different so in the previous case you could do two things right you could either buy or you could, or you could sell now there is third thing and that might be forced which is you have to rest and it is forced like a forced rest right so how do you do that okay so so let's uh, see this so when when does this happen after your sell you have to do a forced rest after you sell you have to do a forced rest and then you can buy you can buy either at the beginning or you can buy after the rest right and sell after you buy you can sell anytime right so 
again let's mention so in the previous problem like we're meeting buy and sell let's maintain buy sell and rest so buy we were giving it the smallest value possible because on the first day it will be minus price and then minus price is negative so and you want to do mat dot max so that's why you want to keep it even larger negative and then okay sell can never be less than zero i mean you would never want a negative profit rest again you can initialize it zero now for each uh now let's go through each day right and so in each day one thing is you could either buy right so buy equals to so if you buy then obviously uh, and this is all obviously again balance after buy right this is balance after you bought and then balance after you sold and this is balance after resting this might just be forced which this might this will just be the balance after sold right or like from the previous day obviously so so if you buy it then either you whatever when you last bought that or so if you buy then either it was the last buy or what or you buy on this day so when you buy on this day you have to look at the you can't buy without resting right so i mean the first day again rest will be zero so you you rested your balance was that and then you give away your price okay this is buy and other thing is sell so after you sell so you sell after you bought so you go buy and then you give your price right and rest is what so rest is the last sell so that means not this sell but because this this sell could be this or it could also be this we don't know so maybe first update the rest uh, maybe first update the rest okay so rest equals to rest is equal to just sell right and sell equals to yeah so either you buy or you rest or you sell uh, let's just understand again if there is a problem or not so when you're buying you will depend on rest when you're resting it will be the last sell and when you're selling either it will be the last sell or you will sell on this day which will depend upon the you sell or you buy you buy after you rest and rest is after your uh obviously this is again there is is it a math dot max or something no if you're resting that means you're forced to rest after your sell so there is no math dot max here you are forced to uh you are forced to do rest okay so this is these are the things uh cool then and so when you return at the end it will be either you rested you, like you don't want to return the buy at the point but you have to return the either rest or sell right because you sold you got the profit or is or you sold on the previous day and that's a better profit so okay let's see this if it works okay it doesn't understand some symbol because the loop that i used and it works let's move on to the next problem now watch this so you're given again the same array in this prices find the maximum profit you can achieve but there is the condition here is you can cut complete at most two transactions so you cannot do more than two transactions so like when we're doing buy sell now it's buy sell buy sell uh you cannot do more than two transactions Okay, so 
So the thing to note here is the sequence, right? So the sequence will always be uh, I guess let's make it uh, I would make it generic and I would actually do this problem first, which is essentially the same as the previous, except that in the previous it said you can complete at most two transactions. Here it's at most k transactions. So let's let's solve this one first. So when you're at most k transactions, uh, there is a limit on the number of transactions that you can do. If you go back to unlimited number and the way we solved, which was this, uh, we just did a buy and a sell. On every day, it was an option whether you want to buy or you don't want to buy or you still don't want to sell. And then you kept on increasing your balance, right? Here you bought or you sold. If you buy, you get this. If you sell, you get this. There was never a limit upon uh, which, buy, which transaction it is because that, there was never a concern about which transaction it is, but now there is a concern on which transaction. So instead of a just general buy and sell, you have to have a limit on number of buy and sell. So let's maybe, and then it will depend upon the last buy and last sell. So uh, here, let's say buy equals to in a uh, new in of Let's define an array of buy and sell instead, okay? So, a new int of k, and again, sell equals to new int of k. Again, let's define the buy as, uh, like, array stop till buy with minimum thing. Let's go through each and every day like we did earlier. So for each int i equals to zero, uh, or rather price in prices for each day, so the prices. Now you can fill up up to k. So let's do this. i equals to or yeah, I equals to zero. i is less than k. i plus plus. Now, so now buy of i, okay, buy of i will depend upon, uh, uh, basically I want buy of i equals to again math dot max of buy of i but also uh, like a previous so sell of i minus one minus prices minus price right but uh, there is this thing that i zero minus won't be a problem so handle i equals to zero separately Just, just minus price. Okay. And obviously, sell of i equals to dot max. And so you will sell of i. And uh, you want to return after you sell. Uh, so you bought. So you bought. You don't say that you bought, and then uh, after that, uh, you sell, right? So you basically, this is what we're doing is as earlier we were making a single because it does not matter the number of times you buy and sell. Or here it matters the number of times you buy and sell. So each day, we are, meant, we are looking at this state. For each day, we're looking at the state where this is the first, uh, that we're in a state where we have bought one, 
uh, we have bought x uh, we have done x transactions so that's a better way to say right so so by f1 by if i is the state where i have bought once so i have bought once then for i is equal to zero it would be either i it would be this minus price not out and then for i equal, for the first day sell of one would be if i bought sell the second one now what would be the value of buy five on the first day on the first day why would i buy five times is it even possible that on the first day i buy five times the only way for that to be possible would be that i buy sell buy sell buy sell buy sell on the same day right it doesn't make any sense but you just you just keep that and and so this this is the thing so uh and then at the end you would just return sell of uh k minus 1 i guess all right so let's see if this works and doesn't work so let's see what's the problem so on every day uh there are you can either buy the first time by the second time by the third time by the fourth time oh yeah so the problem here is uh when you when you buying it will be buy of i minus 1 and then again when you selling uh first of all this has to be oh there is problem there is multiple problems i see okay uh so for i equals to 0 we intentionally wanted to keep either buy of i or minus price else so whatever last you sold minus the price and again here whatever last you buy plus today's price okay sum it again index out of bound exception minus 1 shouldn't happen uh equals to 0 equals here oh this one oh, yeah yeah so this is you have to consider till this so that's fine Yeah, and it works. Now we just say the same code, or and, and put it here, or we could uh, essentially we can do this. Okay, let's we do this and uh, we can just define ks2 right uh, let's just call k equals to 2 and just write on this and this works as well so that's the that's our thing on solving the different problems um using sort of these are all sort of dynamic programming right uh, but yeah all the different six different variants of of best time to buy and sell essentially you maintain the state you see on a particular day what you can do and then just maintain those states and and yeah